Hi, I'm Adam from Michigan Avionics, and today we're going to talk about the MGL ECB and specifically how to program it and set it up with your EFIS. The MGL ECB or Electronic Circuit Breaker System is an advanced power distribution system that allows you to eliminate uh, the need for mechanical breakers on your instrument panel and have finer control over breaker currents. Um, and actually in some ways can be safer because a mechanical breaker at 100% load can take minutes to trip whereas this as soon as it goes over can trip within a tenth of a second if you'd like it to. Before installing your ECB you need to take care to consider the installation of uh, the unit in your aircraft and then also the power distribution plan that you have for the system as far as uh, breaker currents, um, you know, switch inputs and things like that to make sure that uh, the finished installation makes sense for you and your mission. Once you have the system installed and wired, it's now time to program it and we're going to go ahead and talk about doing that. There's three ways to program the ECB. Uh, one is through the use of dip switches on the top of it. Uh, the next way is to do it through a computer using RS-232. And finally, of course, you can use an MGL EFIS uh, in aircraft that are equipped with such. We're going to go ahead and first talk about the dip switch programming method. When programming the ECB using the dip switches, we have 26 different profiles that we can select from, including uh, a programming profile, which means that you're going to do it from your EFIS or from a computer, um, as well as a, it's called Profile 32, where you can enable and disable certain functions like wigwag um, or flasher mode. So the first profile that we have here is profile one. All the switches are down, and this is also identified as ECB one because the first three switches are down. In normal use, the first three switches are your CAN bus identification switches, and you can do up to eight different combinations with these switches to have up to eight ECBs or 64 circuits. Uh, and then switches four through eight are your actual profile switches. When you're programming, again, the wigwag or the flasher functions, you're going to use all eight of those switches. And that's how the ECB knows uh, that it's being programmed for those functions. If you're simply programming the ECB using the switches, there's 26 use cases available to you that are explained in the installation manual. One of those use cases is actually the programming uh, use case, which is where the EFIS or the uh, computer via RS-232 will program this. Uh, so in reality, there's 25. Um, this one that we're in here right now, is program one. So the first three switches in normal use are the CAN identification. So again, if you're using this with an EFIS, uh, you have eight different combinations for up to eight ECBs. Uh, and then four through eight here are gonna be the actual programming switches uh, for your breaker currents. So if I go ahead and just turn four on, now we're in profile two, which is the same as profile one, except for breakers one and two are now paralleled together, which means that the pair of them are gonna allow for 20 amps of current through them. If we go back to profile one, again, just by flipping a switch, now each breaker is just simply 10 amps. Again, all of the breaker profiles are laid out in the installation manual, so if this is your chosen method of installation, make sure that you look through each one of them carefully so that you can find the one that fits your needs. Another programming profile that you're going to be using is Profile 32. Uh, this is the special function setup for the, uh, for the ECB for things like wigwag, uh, flasher mode, uh, things like that. Um, so I have this set up for wigwag on. And uh, so profile 32 is switches four through eight all on, and then the first three switches determine what the program function is gonna be. So I have this set up, so all I do is I just apply power to it, and then we watch the green LED. You can see that it flashed once. We can just go ahead and pull power, and then we can reset all of these dip switches right back to where they were, which in this case was gonna be profile zero. And then when we reapply power, once again, the green LED is back, and now it's communicating on the CAN bus, and now we're ready to use the ECB with Wigwag on. So now let's talk about how to program this thing from your EFIS. First thing we need to do is get to Profile 31. So I'm going to remove power from the ECB, and then I'm going to turn on switches 8, 7, 6, and 5. And now, when I reapply power, Wait for the ECB to come on, so we got a green flashing light again. And now we can come over to the uh, EFIS here, and we have ECB1 uh, breakers, 
and then we have the module set up in status. All right, so we're gonna start programming from the EFIS now. So first thing I'll do is show you how to get to this page. We'll go ahead and leave all these. So first thing is menu. Then we go to system setup menu. And now we page down one, you can see at the bottom, MGL ECB breaker setup. So we'll go ahead and select that. And you can see ECB module breakers one through eight. The not detected has gone away, so we'll select that. So the first area that we'll go into is the ECB module status and setup. So you can see uh, the dip switch setting there, it's just in a generic profile, but uh, ECB profile 31 is what's important. That means that we're gonna be controlling this from the EFIS. Um, so now we can turn wigwag on and off. You can turn the flasher on and off. You see it's set up for eight independent breakers, single indicator LEDs. Uh, these are all items that are discussed in the installation manual. So we're just gonna go ahead and bypass those for now. I've got this light bulb here hooked up to uh, terminal number four on the ECB, so I'm going to set that up. So breaker four, I'm going to enable. I'm going to name it uh, something like, uh, I actually got to delete these first, so we'll delete all this. Go light. Enter. Trip current, we'll set to, uh, we'll go five amps. And then trip time is two seconds. We'll actually go ahead and bring that down to half of a second. And then the default state is on. So we can go ahead and exit that. So now on our main screen here, you can see this ECB button. So if we push it, now you can see light is on. And now light is off. So I'll go ahead and just hook my light bulb up here real quick. And we can just see that the light is in fact on. So we can see that we have control of the light bulb on the EFIS here. We can control it from the EFIS or we can do switch control. Um, pay attention to the install manual because it does tell you if you're gonna do EFIS control, you need to ground all the switch inputs, uh, basically just by jumping the wires together. So read the install manual for that. So one thing I'm gonna demonstrate real quick with the ECB is uh, the current faulting. So on menu here, on system setup menu and under the ECB setup. On option four, we have the light and we have a current trip of two amps. Now I know for a fact this light bulb uh, trips at, or rather draws much more than two amps, but this would be a good example. So I had actually already tested this once, so you see it's faulted already, but if I just tap it, it actually resets it. And if I tap it again, the light flashes for half a second and now it's faulted and we reset one more time. If I just go ahead and simply come back to our system setup menu here, and I go back to the ECB setup, and I set this to something more appropriate, like let's see, five amps, enter. Now, if I go back to our main screen, go to ECB, now the light stays on and the uh, circuit doesn't trip. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video on the MGL ECB. Uh, I hope that this kind of helps you uh, install this in your aircraft a little bit easier, uh, answers a little bit of uh, uh, unclear things in the installation manual. Uh, if it doesn't, our support channels are always open, support.michiganavionics.com. If you have any questions on this system, we're happy to help you. Uh, otherwise, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be putting out more videos like this for all of the MGL products. Uh, and also hit the notification bell because sometimes even just subscribing doesn't let you know that we actually uploaded a video. Uh, if you have any suggestions for videos or knowledge-based articles, please feel free to let us know again at support.michiganavionics.com. Uh, but until then, we'll see you next time.